Let's go through some of the key terminology we're going to see when we're dealing with uh, different things in geometry. First one is pretty straightforward. It's a point. And a point is just a single dot, and you always label it with a letter. We're going to use points to define pretty much everything else. So moving on to the next one, we have a line. And a line is what we're used to, something straight that goes through at least two points. And in particular, when we define lines, we're going to define it by any two points on the line. Since it does go forever in each direction, we can pick any two points on the line and we'll be fine. We can also pick it in any order. So for example, line DE would be an acceptable name. We put this little symbol above it. We could also call it uh, ED. And we could call it uh, FE and use all the other combinations of two letters in either order to define a line. A line segment here is a little more specific. If we want to talk about the entire uh, segment that we see on the screen, we would be starting here at A and ending at B, or starting at B and ending at A, depending on which way you flip it. But you cannot define it by saying AC, for example, because C would cut the segment short, and you don't want to do that. So if we were to name this, we could call this AB, and we're actually going to leave it without any lines on top, uh, just because that's the way you will see line segments typically written in this course, in the homework packet, quizzes, tests, and things like that. So we could just call it segment AB or segment BA. Moving on down, we see uh, a ray. An array, if you think about a ray of sunshine, you have the sun, and then you have rays that come outwards. Same idea here. Uh, this ray starts at point D. So you have point D as the start, and then it goes outwards forever in this one direction. We could call it ray D E, with a little symbol here pointing in the direction away from the D. We could also call it DF because F is on the way out as you go away from D. So we call it DF. Now you could not call it uh, ED or FD because by making it backwards it no longer uh, the ray would point the other direction. You also uh, can't start it anywhere except D. You could not start it with F for example. That would not work. Jumping down, we have collinear. Whenever points are collinear, there's a few parts to think about. The co means the together, uh, and the linear means they're forming a line. So together, these points form a line. So if I were to draw three example points here, they would together be in the same line. So that makes them collinear. Uh, next one is a plane. A plane is a flat surface, so you might even want to just list that out here. Flat surface. You might want to also say uh, two-dimensional, 2D surface, like a tabletop or a floor or a wall. When you're naming a plane, we're going to get uh, specific. Uh, there's a few different things you can do. You could call it plane F or plane P or give the entire plane a single uh, one letter name. And it's not a point, it's just naming the whole plane. Another thing you could do is use points. And if you had some points on a plane, let's say A, B, and C, you could take those three points and call it plane ABC. And that would be one way to label it. The only rule with picking those points to, to label the plane is that the three points are not in a row. If the three points were in a row, let's say A, B, and C over here, who knows if those three points are on this one plane that we're trying to define, or if they're on a plane going straight up and down, or m multiple other different planes you could create if they're all in a line. So they have to not be in a line. Coplanar is just taking what we talked about above and uh, giving it a term. So when we have th uh, three points here, or any number of points that share the same plane, 
then they would be coplanar. So up there is a pretty good drawing of it. And if we were to write it out, it's points on the same plane. Skipping down to our next one, parallel lines are something we're used to seeing, something like train tracks. Uh, they're two lines that do not intersect. There are two lines that never intersect. And one thing that you can do with these two lines that's kind of cool is uh, mark them with these little arrows. What these little arrows do is they tell you that these lines will never intersect. They tell you that they're parallel. So whenever you have parallel lines, uh, always put those little symbols on to remind you that they'll never intersect. Uh, writing out a definition, two lines that never intersect, but there's one specific part uh, that we need to mention. The lines have to be in the same plane. And so we're going to write the same plane thing right here. If you have two lines that don't intersect, uh, but they are in different planes, they actually uh, is a term for that and it's called skewed lines. So an example of skewed lines would be, let's say we have one going up and down here, and then we have another line that's kind of coming out in out of the page and kind of going back here. This one line here will never intersect with this one if you assume that this is 3D space. Don't look at the picture as if it's flat, but look at this line as if it's going into space. They'll never intersect each other, but they also are not parallel. So when you have two lines that never intersect, but are in different planes, then you have skewed lines. Next one is perpendicular. Now perpendicular lines uh, do intersect. And in fact, they intersect at a very specific angle. They intersect at a right angle or a 90 degree angle. So two lines that intersect or cross at 90 degree angles. Moving on, we have an angle here, and what I'm going to ask you to do actually is in pencil, you just want to write in a little number three uh, inside of this angle. Now, there are multiple ways to define uh, an angle, to name an angle. And what we're trying to find is this part right here, the measure of uh, the inside here of this angle. First way we can do that is simply calling it angle 3. So whenever you have a number inside, that's one thing you can do is call it angle 3. Another is name it after the main vertice here, so we can call it angle Q. Neither of those names are my favorite. Uh, the numbered angles can sometimes be okay. The single letter is generally a bad idea. So you can do it, but generally a bad idea. Other names uh, you can use is the three letter names. And that's where you start on one end, you go to the vertex, and then you bounce back out. So if I were to call it angle R, Q, P, or I could go the other way and call it angle P, Q, R, all of these would be acceptable. Any point out here on the ray, the vertex is always in the middle, and then another point out here on the ray. Next one is congruent angles, and that's when you have two angles that have the same measure. So angles with same measure. And sometimes you can have that in the same shape. So, for example, if you have a triangle, an isosceles triangle, we'll see that this angle up on top is definitely different than the other ones. But the two angles, the two smaller angles, are exactly the same. And whenever you have angle measures that are the same, you are going to want to mark your picture with a little symbol like this. A single mark saying, hey, these two angles are identical. Now if you have multiple uh, 
shapes going on or multiple sets of things that are the same, like let's say all three of these here are the same, and you don't want to confuse it with the fact that you put a single mark over on uh, this other triangle for these two angles, you can use two marks. And if you had uh, a third angle that you wanted to mark up, maybe this one here, it was uh, congruent to something else off the page, you could use three marks. You could just keep using additional marks in order to keep track of what things are congruent to each other. Jumping now to congruent segments, it's the same concept. So if you have uh, a segment here and another segment here, you can put a little mark in it in the side like this to indicate that those two segments are congruent with one another. If you had, going back to the triangle example, if you had something like this here and you knew that the two sides were the same length, you could mark those as being identical to one another with uh, the tick marks. And you keep adding more tick marks if you keep having more sets of congruent segments. The reason you always want to mark it is it helps you keep track of what you know for sure from your picture and what just kind of looks true. And that's the first section, definitions.